boy. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here. My name is Sunday Parker, and I'm an accessibility evangelist. Hi, and I'm Adam Rodenbeck, an accessibility engineer. Adam and I are both joining you today from our product accessibility team here at Salesforce, and we're really excited to share with you how we drive equality through our products. But before we get too far, just a quick note that this presentation will contain forward-looking statements, and all purchasing decisions should be based on offerings that are currently available. So we have a packed agenda today. First, I'm going to go over briefly what accessibility is, introduce you to our team, and share with you our commitment to accessibility. I'm then going to be passing it over to Adam for a screen reader demo, go over our Salesforce Lightning design system, and next steps. So to kick things off, let's talk briefly about what accessibility really is as it relates to digital space. Accessibility is about ensuring people with disabilities have full and equal access to the web or mobile application. A fundamental part of this is ensuring that content can be digested, but also that, for example, a screen reader user can navigate easily around the page and interact with elements such as editing a field or adding a comment to their colleague on Chatter. Here at Salesforce, we're really fortunate to have a team of dedicated accessibility specialists and engineers. The majority of our members on our team focus on one particular cloud, such as Adam here, who focuses on Sales Cloud. Our team supports thousands across our technology and product or organization. And in order to successfully scale accessibility, we serve it as advisors so that every single engineer and designer is empowered to own accessibility within their respective product. Now, what's really exciting about this slide is that one year ago, it would have looked a lot differently. And that's because over the last 12 months, we've nearly doubled as a team thanks to our leadership's commitment to investing in accessibility. But we also have a commitment to you, our customers. And it's really quite simple. We're committed to providing on-demand accessible applications that are accessible to everyone. So how do we accomplish this? Well, we design with accessibility in mind from the start, and we thread these inclusive practices throughout our ideation, design, development, and testing of our products. If you think about the process of building a skyscraper, you would never add an elevator in after the building has already been constructed. You would build in the right from the start. That is the same way we think about accessibility in the beginning of the design process. But designing accessible interfaces is an ongoing journey, and we are never really finished. We are constantly evolving and adding new innovative features, features that we want to ensure are accessible and stay accessible. I'm going to share with you a typical journey of how our team works with a product team to ensure accessibility. Cordelia here is an engineer dedicated to Service Cloud. The Service Console team is looking to build out a new feature. So they meet up with her to discuss their designs. After some feedback, they're ready to start building. And so their engineering team reaches out for another consultation. In this meeting, they're going to discuss development plans and testing plans for her to review. Throughout the whole development, she'll conduct ongoing checks with the team as needed to ensure they're on track. And finally, the team will conduct a third-party accessibility audit of their product to uncover any bugs and fix any remaining accessibility issues prior to the launch of the product. In addition to accessibility consultations, like the example I just showed, we also offer training, which coincides with our release cycle, to provide ongoing education and awareness to our teams. Typically, our team will conduct four to five trainings throughout the release, which typically uh, kicks off with an introduction to accessibility course, which is great for new team members who are joining, as well as a designing training and an, a coding training and testing, in addition to some other um, training offerings we have. We also offer weekly open office hours for teams that may have specific use cases where they could get one-on-one -on -one support from our team. And since we love drinking our own champagne here at Salesforce, we also use Chatter to collaborate internally and Trailhead, which Adam will speak to in a bit. So why do we care so deeply about this here at Salesforce? 
In the next couple of slides, I'm gonna outline three big ideas that help drive inclusive practices. These are equality, you are customers, and finally, the user experience. So let's dive in. Equality is one of our core values, and we believe that business can be a platform for positive change. We're creating accessible products because it is fundamentally the right thing to do. I'm aware as an employee at a technology company like Salesforce that I am the exception and not the rule. The employment rate for people with disabilities is only 36%. One in four of us are living at or below the poverty rate. And of the incarcerated prison population, inmates are three times as likely to report having one or more disability. As a company, we understand that there is a significant equality gap for minorities. And as our chief equality officer says, businesses need to focus on closing this gap. But also by providing an accessible platform, we're empowering you, our customers, to build, to hire stronger and more diverse teams. People with disabilities are the largest minority, with one in five Americans having a disability. These are both your customers and your potential colleagues. The aging population is expected to double by 2050. While age and disability are not always connected, with age comes a greater likelihood of having a disability. Not only are we all aging, but we're staying in the workforce longer, and by 2022, American workers aged 50 and up will make up 35% of our workforce. But also by 2022, we're expected to add 3.3 million jobs through the Salesforce ecosystem. This is a significant opportunity to close the under and unemployment gap for people with disabilities. And finally, I'm gonna bring it back to the user experience. If we take a couple look at, look at a couple of the inclusive design principles, we'll see here that the building blocks that build accessible products are really just the building blocks to build products that are more usable by everyone. For example, we all want products that offer choice, are consistent, and can be used in a variety of situations. If you take a look at the chart on the right, our friends at Microsoft have created this inclusive design personas, which covers permanent, temporary, and situational disabilities. If we hone in on the hearing column, we'll see here an individual who's deaf, someone with an ear infection, and a bartender in a noisy environment. All of these individuals would benefit from closed captioning. So accessibility is not just for people with disabilities. At some point in our lives, we've all benefited from features that were built for accessibility. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Adam. All right, thanks, Sunday. Today we're gonna do a demo of a screen reader using Service Console, and more specifically, using the live chat feature. So a screen reader is a piece of assistive technology which takes text on screen and delivers it to a synthesized voice or a connected braille display. A screen reader also can virtualize the web interface and allow a screen reader user to navigate by using more than just the tab key. For example, a person with a screen reader can navigate to elements such as headings, buttons, edit boxes, and many different things with just one keystroke. We also build in keystrokes to Service Console to allow a person to jump to key areas such as the workspace tabs and the utility bar. Today during our demo, we'll be using the NVDA screen reader from NV Access. And while this is not the only screen reader, the techniques that we use in our designs allow for all screen readers, including VoiceOver, which is built into the Mac OS. Now, I've lowered the speech rate today a little bit so that hopefully it's a little bit more easy to understand. But it's worth noting that many screen reader users prefer to use their screen readers at a much higher rate of speech so that they can get as much information as possible as quickly as possible. I also included a red focus indicator that will show you what the screen reader is currently speaking. So today we're gonna start with a service console and do a chat between a customer and a service rep. And the first thing that I'll do is accept the chat by navigating to the bottom of the screen and then hitting the accept chat button. So let's take a listen.
list with one item 6s. Button accept chat transcript 0000 0469. Unavailable. Returns and exchanges sales force document. So here I was able to find the bottom of the page with, a, with one hotkey and then jump to the previous button, which is that start chat. The chat visitor is typing. I would like to check on the status of my microwave. My case number is 2892. Can you help? Jenny Bullet 248 and 11 seconds PM. Warning, type a message. So here we heard that the chat, the chat user was typing followed by the message and the time that that came in. And we also heard the case number that they wanted to look up so that we can see what's wrong with their product. Sure thing, let me check on that. I'm now gonna navigate to the top of the page and then find the first edit field, which in this case should be the global search. I'll type in that case number and then arrow down through the list of case choices. Out of edit banner landmark links give to navigation. Search Salesforce combo box collapsed has auto complete edit. Search 2892 one of two. 00002892 case bullet requesting second lamp for microwave two of two. Tab control, loading. So here I hear that the case is loaded. Uh, I heard what the case is, uh, requesting a second lamp for the microwave and the full case number with the zeros in front. Because I'm familiar with this page, I know that the case notes are gonna be the first heading and I'm gonna jump to that with screen reader navigation and then arrow down through the text on the screen. Bing. Tab press space bar to reorder. 404, selected, loading. Case comments, one, link heading level two. Heading level two link, one. Menu button sub menu show actions for this object. List with one items menu button sub menu show more. Heading level three link Adam Rodenbeck. List with three items public. Graphic false, created date. 5 slash 23 slash 2019 339 p.m. Comment. Estimated delivery, end of day May 30th, 2019. So as I was arrowing down, I heard it tell me who created the case. I also heard the time and date that it was posted. The public checkbox and whether or not that was checked. In this case, it said false. And the fact that the estimated delivery date is end of day tomorrow. So I now need to go back to the conversation with my customer and let them know what I found out. And I can do this through a service console key command, G followed by W, to take me straight to the workspace tabs. I'll then use the arrow keys to arrow right across them and find the one for the chat. Header, tab control, case 00002892 tab selected, press space bar to reorder. Knowledge cab, how do I fill in FAQ? Knowledge cab returns and exchanges tab selected press space bar to reorder. Star live chat transcript 00000469 000 tab selected press space bar to reorder. Actions for 00000469 000 menu button sub menu actions for zero. And as I moved across those tabs, I heard the name of each one, the various knowledge articles that were there, as well as press space to reorder, which lets me know that there's keyboard navigation built in here to allow me to enter into a drag and drop mode. So if I needed to, I could press space bar and then use my arrow keys to reposition the tabs in an order that makes more sense for my workflow. Type a message. Ed We've been looking here at the customer, at the customer service side of things, but not the customer. It's important to note that the web interface that your customers use get the same accessibility. Your order is in progress. It is scheduled to be delivered by end of day tomorrow. The chat visitor is typing. Warning, new activity in tab 00000469. Warning, new activity in tab 00000469. New activity, awesome. Jenny Bullet 250 and 10 seconds PM. New activity. And we're hearing that warning message just to let the customer service representative know that there's activity in the tab. Is there anything else I can help you with? The chat visitor is typing. Warning, new activity in tab 00000469. Warning, new activity in tab 00000469. New activity, no thank you, goodbye. 
Chat ended by Ginny Bull at 2.50 and 52 seconds p.m. Live chat transcript. So there's just a quick demo of how a customer service representative can interact with their customer using the web snap-in. And as I said before, all of the things that you heard reported to the screen reader on the customer service side in Service Console are also reported to someone using a screen reader on the web snap-in side. So they get the same announcement that the person is typing as well as the messages as they come back and forth. So how does all of this work? The main component to all of it is the lightning design system. As Sunday said earlier, you wouldn't construct a building and add the elevator later. And you also wouldn't invent an elevator every time you needed one. You would actually go for one that was already built that's reusable and can be placed into the building. So to bring this into a web analogy, to bring this analogy into web development, the Lightning design system is built with accessibility in mind and provides reusable components that you can put throughout your product to make it accessible. And you can learn more about that at lightningdesignsystem.com. So what's next? What we want to do is more. We want to continue on the path of delivering you more information through our developer blogs, as well as creating more knowledge base articles so that users can find information about the accessibility that we've built into the product. We also want to do more to expand our Trailhead module offerings. And I'm excited to tell you that we now are announcing our, new, our newest trail, which is Get Started with Accessibility on the Web. This is a great trail which tells you about the basics of accessibility, coding, and testing. And you can find that on trailhead.com or through the short URL sfdc.co slash a11y hyphen trail. What's the next slide? Stay in touch. And we also want to continue this conversation. We're really glad that you came today. And we want to keep that going. So we invite all of you to come to our, our Trailblazer forum, Disability Topics, where we can keep talking about the things that you need. We also, you can find that at sfdc.co slash disability hyphen topics. We also uh, want to ask you to join our research program, which is a really great way to tell us about the things that you would like to see in the products. And we have information about that at sfdc.co slash a11y hyphen research. And finally, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for coming today and learning about accessibility. And we want to thank you for being awesome customers and for thinking about how to build accessibility into your products. Can you hear me? Oh, I, I think we have like a minute for questions if there's anyone that has anything. No? So the, the question is, how can you get in touch um, if you find a bug or an issue on the platform and you want to report it? Um, so if you're looking for more best practice support questions, um, definitely the Disability Topics Forum is a great place to start. Um, but if you find an, an actual bug, you can actually just file a support case through our help and training platform. Um, and that'll get escalated to the, the proper channels. Um, and our support agents are trained in accessibility. Um, and also they have a, a pathway to connect with us on the accessibility team uh, to confirm some of those, those issues as well. But yeah, definitely let us know. All right, um, so Adam and I will be kind of hanging out around on the side if you do think of any more questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.